Greetings to everyone, I'm Andrew from Hungary and without any time stealing YouTube stuffs I would like to talk about the R7 and the Sigma 150-600mm contemporary combo. Well, there is a huge controversy about it. The weight pattern proved one of his latest video that the pulsing issue is legit. If you haven't seen it, please check, the link is down below. I tested it with my penguin toy at a very close range and the issue was also noticeable with my gear. However, sometimes the pulsing is stronger, sometimes it's weaker. Even though I mentioned the pulsing issue and Sigma's official response in my former video, my huge mistake was that when I tested my combo, I was never so close to a subject to get it on the full frame of the camera. The amazing keeper ray tricked me, compared to what I have experienced with the 90D. Misfocused shots were clear for me, but I thought the soft shots were due to camera shakes. I had read many forums when I was a 90D owner that the 32 megapixel on an APS-C is not so forgiving, as the higher pixel density does not just strengthen the noise, but there is also a bigger possibility of getting noticeable camera shakes. Anyway, the one shot mode and single point autofocus work just fine without any issue, but, but I think it's quite pointless to have an R7 if you don't use the Animal IAF. However, this is just my opinion. I experienced that the servo IAF mode can deliver amazing results and I'm quite delighted with my compo so far. But not everyone shared this view. I have read tons of comments, forum discussions and the picture was really not clear. There are many who are satisfied with this combo, like me, and many who just hate it and not delighted with it. It appeared to me that who has come from an older DSLR, they tend to be more satisfied than people who has already owned higher-end cameras and lenses. I have read former 90D, M50, M6 Mark II and even many 7D Mark II owners comments who share the same experience as I have, that their keeper rate is much higher now than they had with their former gear. But on the other hand, I have read experiences about getting more soft shots than sharp ones. Somebody has just 15% keeper rate and there was someone who just put away his lens after 2 minutes of usage. I really don't know what's going on. Maybe it's about budget experiences that as budget shooters we are used to getting soft shots and getting just way much less in most of the time why we are having a wonderful IAF is a big deal for us. But enough about talking, let me show you some of my recent results with lots of raw images and burst review. Firstly, I would like to talk about my experiences with the common swifts. They are really crazy birds, I really love them. They are super super fast, their maximum speed is around 110 km per hour slash 69 miles per hour horizontally. In the past, with my former 90D, I just couldn't take any acceptable shots about them because they were just so fast, crazy fast, and I struggled with the focus. But finally, with the R7, I could take some nice photos from the kitchen window and I was mega mega happy. To be honest, it is still hard and challenging to track these birds with this combo while they are flying like a Formula 1 car, like Verstappen. I missed some great shots, but the task isn't impossible. Now, I would like to show you some raw examples from the real world about the pulsing issue. To show you how many soft shots you can expect by using burst without monopod or tripod. Surely, some soft shots are because of the camera shake as well. Firstly, I made a common linear test. Here you can see the results.
Finally, let me show you some sample shots I have taken so far with my combo. So, let be straight, we have to face the fact that on a budget we need to make compromises and sacrifice something. What you choose really depends on your personal style and preferences. In the case of third-party zoom telelenses, the sacrifice is the pulsing issue. While the IAF works, it works inconsistently. For some it works better, for some it works worse. Thankfully, I'm delighted with how it works. With the RF 100 to 400, you make compromise with the reach, while having just f8 wide open. With the RF 600, you sacrifice zooming option, and you are at f11 with quite bad minimum focus distance. To mention the RF 600 brother, it seems it's hard to handhold the RF 800 on a crop body, and find the subjects on the frame. And you are also at f11 without zooming option and with bad minimum focus distance. EF400 5.6 is an interesting option. The IBIS can really revive this lens, but you lose zooming option and pure reach without teleconverter. You have to sacrifice something with each of these gear I mentioned. Actually, perfect lens just doesn't exist. Even with a very expensive prime, you sacrifice something mobility and hand holding option. So the conclusion is the following. It all depends on the situation and your personal preferences and style. Nonetheless, in the future, the weight pattern will create a comparison video about these lenses I mentioned to find out which is the best solution on a budget right now. So I'm really looking forward to his results. Plus, Wild Alaska channel has also great videos about the RF budget options, so you should also check those. All in all, is the pulsing issue a deal breaker for me? No, not at all. I didn't change my mind. For me, for my style and my budget, Sigma is the best option so far. And I will keep it. And I just hope Canyon will come up with a better 600mm option soon or the RF mount will be opened for the third party manufacturers. Till then, time to time I will make videos about my results with the R7 and the Sigma C combo to represent a budget perspective. But I want to be authentic and there is one thing I know for sure, I'm not a reviewer guy. Good view numbers are great, but to be yourself is more important. That's why in the future I would like to make contents which match with my style. Funny but educational videos about birds to entertain and inform at the same time. And I also would like to make more serious videos like interview with a biologist and I don't want to spoil the rest. So until the next time I wish you all to have nice lives, chirping birds and lots of joy in the field. And lastly, just don't stress about the results too much because the wildlife offers you way more than just amazing shots. Mm -hmm.